clocks. Brighton's ruddy well full of them, from digital doobries to mechanical marvels atop church towers and shops, from pubs to public spaces, the most famous of all being the clock tower. Not this one, or this one, or this one, or this, this one. Despite being in the centre of town, it has had a troubled history, from cancelled funding to complaining residents, mechanical mishaps to an important key ending up on the other side of the world. It's time to roll titles. A competition was held in 1881 to design a clock tower for Brighton, Henry Branch and Thomas Simpson, the architect behind most of Brighton and Hove's schools of that era, won, but their joy was short-lived. On learning the cost of the tower, around a thousand pounds, the council went, eh, what, Roffel, you're having a laugh, give your heads a shake, only probably in more 19th century language, and the whole idea was shelved. Sad face emoji. A few years later, practically every town in Britain was building a clock tower for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee, so Brighton wanted in on the action. All of a sudden, the council was still moaning about the cost, so they needed to find somebody willing to fund it. Step forward, local advertising executive James Willing. Yes, when I said somebody willing, that was a play on words. He's the guy who invented advertising billboards, by the way. Thanks for that, James. Anyway, he put up £2,000, double the amount the council had been walking at, to cover construction costs and a whole new competition was held. This was won by the lazily named London architect John Johnson, whose middle name was Johnny. Probably. In typical Brighton fashion, the clock tower didn't actually open in time for the Jubilee year, but three weeks into the following year, the fact that the date of opening, 20th of January 1888, was the 70th birthday of the guy who paid for it, is not a coincidence. As well as portraits of Victoria, Albert, the future Edward VII and his wife, together with half boats pointing at the station, sea, Kemp Town and Hove, the clock tower bears the name James Willing in several locations. Them's the perks of paying for it. All the hoo-ha surrounding the clock tower caught the attention of madcap local inventor Magnus Volk of Electric Railway fame. We like to think he was the inspiration for the character of Doc Brown in the Back to the Future films. Old Magnus wanted in on the action, so he designed an electric time ball to sit on a pole atop the tower. It would slowly rise up and then drop down on the hour, like some tiny golden forerunner of the i360. Kind of. Even in the days before loud nightclubs and live music venues, the residents of Central Brighton liked to complain about noise, and moaning about the sound of the time ball mechanism caused it to be switched off a few years after opening. Some say it was scaring horses, others say it was causing vibrations that were damaging the tower. It was not until a refurbishment in 2002 that it was back in action, promptly conking out seven years later. A further refurbishment for the clock tower's 125th anniversary, 2013, saw it back in action. It's rumoured to still be working these days, but not all of the time. Fun quiz. Where in Brighton and Hove are these ten clocks?
the 125th anniversary celebrations also saw the return to Brighton of the key to the clock tower itself. This was given to the then Mayor Edward Martin by James Willing at the opening ceremony. Martin's family hung on to it even when they emigrated to Australia. His great-great-grandson brought it back for the anniversary celebrations, albeit just to wave it around, go, no, 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 I've got your key, then put it in his pocket and head off back down under with it. Happily, in 2016, he returned to Brighton and gifted the key, which opens this little door under Prince Albert's portrait, to the city. With the key safely returned, the tower now surrounded by some quite ugly street furniture and horrendous traffic, it goes from strength to strength. It's amazing to think that several local councillors, particularly in the 1960s and 70s, wanted to see it demolished. There are few better places in Brighton to settle down with a bottle of cider and growl at language students. Yay, Clock Tower! Whether you're a Brexit bunny or Ronnie Remain, tune in next week as Fact Me Up unravels the links between Brighton and the European Onion.